that have made have made you come blind to the reality of life. But Jesus said, I came to recover sight to those that was blind, to those that they have lost their vision, to those that's dependent on others to see, those that waiting for others to show them the way. Yeah, we used to sing a song said, show me the way. Listen, we need the Lord to show us the way. So Jesus said, I come per by the spirit of the Lord to recover the sight to the blind. And then watch this now. He said, I'm not through yet, but then he said, to set at liberty where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So he said to set at liberty, to set them free, them that are bruised. Hallelujah. Who are those that are bruised? Who, who are the bruised? Let's talk about the bruise on today. We're talking about those who are disabled. We're talking about those who are injured. We're talking about those who are wounded, the bruise. We're talking about those who are hurting. We're talking about those who are afflicted. We're talking about those who are battered. They are the bruise. He said, I come to set a liberty. All of these people with disabilities, these people with wounds that they've had, with injuries that they can't get rid of, with hurts that won't stop, with afflictions that keep coming, and those that have been battered by men and women, he said, I come to set at liberty them that are bruised. Why? The disabled, they can't take care of themselves. They can't do for themselves, and they are abused by many folk. Jesus said, I come to set them free, the wounded free. So what Jesus is saying to us on today, everybody that man has captivated, everybody that man has imprisoned some kind of way or other, he said, I come to set them at liberty. I come to set them free. I come to deliver them from their imprisonment. I come to make them whole. I come to put them back together all over again, pieces that may have been missing in your life, things that was important to you. He said, I came to put those things back together all over again in your life. And then not only that, those set at liberty, them that are bruised, then he's talking about those who have been physically bruised. Some have been physically bruised, physically beat up, physically scorned, beat with hands, whipped and scorned. He said, I come to set you free. Then you have those who have been mentally abused. And many times inside a relationship, men and women, women or man, girls and boys, children have been mentally abused. You have, have been mentally distorted. You have been mentally beat up. Nobody really put their hands on you. Nobody really put their fist to you. Nobody really whip you. But with their mouth, they mentally abuse you. They make you think little of yourself. They make you think nothing of yourself. Call you down and didn't think you were going to be nothing. They told you wasn't nothing. They treated you like you weren't nothing. But Jesus said, I came to set a liberty them that have been physically abused, them that have been mentally abused, them that have been beat up by people, those abusers. He said, I come to set you free from those and then those who have been emotionally disturbed because when you have been physically and mentally abused, you become emotionally disturbed. And those who have become emotionally disturbed, listen, when we look at our world, when we look at our world, and we see people walking down the street, I know you've seen those on Skip Row. I've seen those on Skip Row. We've seen those that's living in the bushes, that's living under the bridges, that's living on the sidewalk. Now, mind you, all of those people that are down there are not disturbed are not meant to disturb. All of them folks down there don't have to be. Some have chosen to be down there because they don't want to work and they don't want to pay. They don't want to give anything for nothing. But then a lot of those are down there because they have been physically abused, mentally abused, emotionally abused, psych you know, uh, psychologically. They, 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 they've been destroyed. And then spiritually, they've been abused. We got folks that go to church and they're abused. They got leaders abusing the sheep. Leaders beating up people. Preachers beating up the sheep. 
teachers abusing the sheep, preachers not treating the sheep like they ought to be treated. But Jesus said, I came to set every body free. So whatever your condition is, whatever name it is, whatever, listen, scientific name it is, whatever doctor's name they want to give it, some big word that you can't spell, don't know what it means, whatever it is, he said, I came to set you free. I came to deliver you. I came to proclaim the gospel of the good news. What is the good news? I know you're down and out. I know you've been emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually destroyed. I know you're disabled you're wounded, you're injured, you're hurting, you're afflicted, and you're battered. He said, I came for you. I came to set you free. And then when you look at the 19th verse, and I'm going back up when he said to, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What was the acceptable year of the Lord? The acceptable year of the Lord was that the year of this time, when he said acceptable, it was a time of the year. I believe it was like ever seven years that they that had debt, those that had bills, those that owed anybody something that they would be forgiven in this acceptable year. In other words, if they had property that folks had taken back from them, they would get property would be given back for them. So the acceptable year of the Lord was is that God would restore or it would be restored back or you would be forgiven for debt that you had. So Jesus said, now the time has come right now. He said, listen, Isaiah prophesied it over 1,500 or 2,000 years ago. He said, but here I am now. I'm reading this word because he said, I'm the one that the spirit of the Lord is on because he's anointed me to preach. He's anointed me to set free everybody. In other words, the acceptable year of the Lord is here. 2021 is the acceptable year of the Lord. Whatever your conditions are, whatever your circumstances are, whatever your disabilities are, you can be set free from those disabilities. He said, I came to heal man of all of his disabilities, not give him more, but to heal him from those disabilities. And when you see it in this word, the Bible said, Jesus said, he said, and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. He just simply said, he began to say, this is it. That that Isaiah had prophesied, that that Isaiah had talked about, is now here. And it said, all bear him witness. And they wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son. It's amazing how God can use us in life to work many miracles and do many things. And people will go back to our beginning. Isn't that so-and-so's son? Isn't that so-and-so's Brother, isn't that so-and-so's mother? Isn't that so-and-so's father? But I tell you on today as I close, we have a great responsibility to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look at me again, this 18 verse as we close. It said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel. Not world news, not people, not places, not things. We recall those things, but that's not what we preach. We mention those things, but that's not what we preach. Mentioning and recalling those things will not save anyone. But he came to preach the gospel. So I want to encourage every preacher, every missionary, every evangelist, every prophet, every priest, rabbi, whoever you may call yourself to be, just believers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, saints of God everywhere, we have a responsibility to proclaim the gospel and nothing else.
He didn't tell me to preach the church I come from. He didn't tell me to preach my former pastor. He didn't tell me to preach my former bishop or elder or first lady, whoever they may be. He said, I came to preach the gospel. I'm not going to save nobody. Preaching about me is not going to save anybody. But preaching about Jesus will save the whole world. And this we do on this day. I preach Jesus unto you. That these that Jesus said he preached to, that I may have the same right and ability to set man free wherever they may be. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to, as the word said this morning, to proclaim the gospel. And you said the gospel, not gossip, not what people say. You said not preaching news, not preaching headlines, but the gospel. So Lord, I offer the gospel to your people. Everyone that can see and everyone that can hear. And those that can't see and hear and those that can't hear and see. Whatever the case may be, you have the power and the ability to let them both hear and see because of your spirit. I pray for the hearers and the listeners and those who see on today that the spirit of the Lord would break every chain. It would touch every life that it was set at liberty to captives, healing broken hearts, setting, amen, the, 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 those that are poor, pulling them out, those giving sight to the blind, setting at liberty those that are bruised. Thank you for your word. I thank you, God, for this awesome day that said Jesus is Lord. Now, Lord, as we pray here now, Maybe someone out there don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Don't know Jesus as their savior. That's really what it's all about. It's not all the other things that we do to make for time. But it's that men and women, girls and boys may come to Christ. I'm talking to somebody out there today that's listening that's not saved. You have a right to be saved right now. You can tell the Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me where I am right now. Come into my heart, God. Wash me, purge me, clean me. Fill me with your spirit that I may be a disciple of yours. I can tell others about who you are and that other men, women, girls, and boys may be saved. I thank you for right now accepting Jesus in my heart, accepting Jesus in my mind. And I thank you, Lord, I'm saved. I thank you, Lord, for the backslider that's listening on this morning. You said I'm married to the backslider. Backslider, God is married to you. I don't care what you do. God never left you. You left God. And God see you where you are. He know you where you are. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Restore me back to my rightful place. In Jesus' name. And you on this morning shall be saved in Jesus' name. God bless you and God keep you. We thank you is our prayer. Thank you for listening. Thank you for hearing. We'll be back this morning, 1045, to give a word for the new year on this day. And we praise God for you. Amen. We will be having communion on this morning. So you prepare yourselves that at the end of the message, we have communion. I will be delivering two announcements concerning when we'll be going, coming back to church and how long and what fast that we're going on on this morning's service, 1045. Meet us again in Jesus' name. God bless you and God keep you. Amen.